We have been number one in terms of customer delightedness. Your team moves 3 million people safely and efficiently every day. In this 40% lies a big value. What's the sustainability impact of that operation? We are now uh, just creating digital twins of, of our stations. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Industry Spectrum, where we will bring you more excellence from the built environment. Joining me today is Dr. Osgur Soy, who leads Metro Istanbul, one of the largest rail operators in the world. Dr. Osgur, welcome to the show. My pleasure. Dr. Osgur, your team moves 3 million people safely and efficiently every day. Help me understand the history, the impact, and the scope of the operations, please. We are the largest uh, public transport operator in Istanbul. Um, let's first talk about Istanbul. Istanbul is a historic city, historic gateway between Europe and Asia. And today it's a, a city of a size of 20 million population. Transportation in such a city is a big challenge. Um, the solution to that, uh, coming from the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, is to develop rail systems more and more. And we are the leading the rail systems, all kinds of rail systems, from trams to metros. In, in Istanbul. Now we have around 40% uh, within the uh, integrated public transport system of Istanbul. 12 million people are moving within the city for in one day and today about 3 million of them are uh, using the metro and tram systems. Can you speak a bit about the scope of the operation, so um, the length of the lines, the number of the stations, to give us you know, an understanding of, of how deep you go within mm -hmm. that city? Now we are uh, one of the top five operators in Europe, uh, we can say. Within a few years, we aim to be in the top three. We plan to surpass Paris uh, in, in size of metros. We have li like 19 different lines. Some of them are metro lines, some tram lines, uh, and also cable cars and funicular systems. We have more than 1,000 vehicles. Every day, we like to say that we are traveling uh, around the world several times. With, uh, with our trains, uh, with our vehicles. So uh, it's a really interesting, diverse uh, and complex operation. How do you source the talent that supports all this growth? And what mm. are some of the priorities that you ask of your team when they're sourcing mm. talent? Yeah, growth uh, is our biggest, one of our biggest challenges uh, because at the moment we have like 12 different uh, new constructions going on. Uh, we, uh, we are proudly saying that we are number one in the world in, in terms of uh, the, t the number of new uh, constructions going on. Only in the last four years, we have uh, grown in more than 30% in terms of number of stations. So for new stations, you need new staff, uh, new maintenance people. And uh, of course, uh, getting the talent and also training the talent is a big challenge. We opened the Metro Academy uh, last year to uh, train uh, and develop people. Any attention to diversity while you were uh, mm. hiring and retaining talent? Yes, uh, when I started my job four years ago, we had around 5% women in the workforce. Uh, we have been able to grow this to above 15% in only four years. So with, in the new hires, uh, we are hiring more than 50% women, uh, especially train drivers. Uh, we had only eight train drivers when we started, but Today, the number is around 300, uh, and uh, they are very, very popular. And uh, it's a big aspiration also for all the women in the country. Please speak about the digital transformation journey mm -hmm. within Metro Istanbul. We have a big team uh, in developing projects. And in the, in the last years, we are always using BIM. We are uh, developing all the new station designs using BIM technology. It is, of course, uh, like a entry-level uh, digital twin uh, creation because in the, in the past uh, you have to find the blueprints of a station to make uh, even some maintenance of revision or revision uh, projects. We are entering more and more into digital twins, uh, which is the last stage we are, we are coming to. And uh, of course, uh, another thing is the uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, in terms of autonomous vehicles, we have already three lines operating with autonomous vehicles three metro lines. Uh, we are being a benchmark uh, in this aspect for many years. Tell us a bit about some of the digital capabilities that you've mm -hmm. added and that has delivered value to your business and to your customers. Okay. We have the most delighted uh, customers, uh, passengers in the world. Comet, the community of metros, is a 
worldwide organization of the largest metros of the world. They are making a survey every year, and then in the last three years, we have been number one in terms of customer delightedness. And then uh, we have the operational metrics. We have uh, like 99.7 on-time uh, scheduled uh, uh, trips uh, being uh, realized. Uh, and uh, we have in the escalators, elevators, uh, the target of uh, Comet and UITP is around 98.2. We have a uh, very uh, successful R&D department. Uh, now we are developing our own tram vehicle. Uh, 34 of them are being produced at the moment. Uh, so in terms of uh, customer satisfaction, in terms of uh, being in the forefront of technology development, uh, we uh, are in a very good position. So uh, I know you've embarked on a digital twin pilot to try and reduce your maintenance cost mm -hmm. and have a bigger portion of your cost be in, in, in operations. Mm -hmm. So if you can speak about, uh, about that pilot a bit, please. Mm -hmm. So we are working with Autodesk Tandem. Uh, we are now uh, just creating digital twins of, of our stations. In total, we are managing uh, about 2 million square meters of, of space. In this space, there are hundreds of thousands of light bulbs, uh, several hundred uh, heating and uh, air conditioning systems, uh, and uh, so much electromechanical systems. Uh, we are number one in the world in the number of uh, escalators and elevators. At the moment, we have more than 2,000 uh, escalators and elevators. Partially uh, thanks to the topography of Istanbul, some of our stations are really deep, go up to 80, 90 meters uh, deep. So we have a big number of uh, elevators, escalators, and uh, you have to keep them up and running all the time, of course. And also, uh, you have to uh, use them in an efficient way, save energy. Uh, so when you create digital twins, uh, that means uh, you have a live uh, digital twin of what's actually happening in, in the real world. So you bring the actual uh, data from the SCADA system to this digital twin, and uh, you can actually walk around in the station and click an electrical uh, board and see what's really happening there. We are managing such a big uh, asset base, and uh, we are using 60% of our time for the operation, for carrying people, and 40% for maintaining the system. And in this 40% lies a big value. When you're moving 3 million people in a city of 20 million, what's the sustainability impact of that mm -hmm. operation on the city of Istanbul? Mm -hmm. The first topic is, of course, energy. Uh, because saving energy doesn't only mean saving money, but also it brings you uh, further in terms of sustainability. Um, so using uh, digital twins, we aim to uh, achieve 12 to 25 percent of energy savings. One aspect of this is the stations. You have, we, we are managing an area of around 2 million uh, square meters, and it's impossible to walk inside these 2 million kilometers every second. But if you have digital twins and if you use technology properly, if you use uh, also in the future, we are, uh, we are working on uh, AI, uh, it will be possible to uh, maintain all the systems in a good way. The second part is also the, the vehicles. Um, if you can schedule the vehicles correctly and if you work on the uh, speeding profiles of the trains, which we do, we, we have an R&D project on that, you can uh, save a lot of regenerative energy. When the train, one train is breaking, you can use that energy to uh, power another train. By using this, we already have achieved 30% energy savings in the train operation. Um, using uh, digitalization and technology co correctly in the uh, sustainability aspect, we are already uh, having some results, and, but we are aiming much more in the future. I can definitely speak to your team's maturity in terms of their initially BIM maturity and now, you know, the innovative work they're doing with Digital Twins. And I'm looking forward to seeing it across uh, all of your assets. Um, Dr. Osgood, if you look at the future of the rail industry, mm -hmm. what do you see the role of Metro Istanbul is contributing to that role? Rail systems are uh, very popular in, in the world. You know, in, in the past, uh, New York... Uh, London, Paris, uh, those were the famous metros in the world. Then came, of course, Moscow and uh, 
uh, some Chinese cities, uh, but uh, we see also uh, this part of the world is also investing heavily uh, in, the, in the metro systems. Metro Istanbul is, of course, firstly an operator of metros. So our first priority is to serve the people of Istanbul, of course. Uh, but also, we now all are also developing projects in other parts of the world, uh, in, from Africa to Middle East to, uh, to Eastern Europe. We sometimes act as a consultant. Uh, consultancy can uh, range from uh, developing a maintenance system to uh, digital twins, uh, etc. Uh, now we are starting to act as operators in other parts of the world. So uh, the future of Metro Istanbul will be less in Istanbul, but also in other parts of, this, of the world. Dr. Osgur, it's inspiring to see how your team uses technology to deliver better outcomes to the community and the city. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.